Hello and welcome back to the TBM 930 World Tour here on the Airborne Lawyer YouTube channel. Today we're going to be visiting a trio of vibrant cultural capital cities. We're first going to bid farewell to Florida and the US. We're going to continue our journey south, first to Havana, then to Kingston, Jamaica, and finally on to Caracas, the capital of Venezuela. We have a full day's flying, so let's get going. So hello and welcome back to the TBM 930 World Tour here on the Airborne Lawyer YouTube channel. It's a bit of an overcast day here in Naples in Florida. Uh, on our last trip down from uh, Kissimmee to Naples, we went over to the uh, Atlantic coast of Florida. We saw the Space Center. We came down uh, past Palm Beach and Fort Lauderdale and Miami and then cut across the Gulf Coast and landed here in Naples. And today, as I say, we're going to be continuing south. We've got Havana, Kingston and Caracas to come today. So we're making a nice early start. It's pretty early morning in Florida and it's all quiet here at Naples. There's no one else on that sim right now. And I've got the plane all set up and we're going to be taxiing out uh, in just a moment. So the TBM 930 World Tour, what's it all about? Well, I guess the clues in the title. Uh, we love Flight Sim 2020, we love the fact we can go anywhere and see everything in such incredible, uh, with such incredible accuracy and such incredible realism. We've seen Disney World, we've seen New York, we've seen Toronto, we've seen Chicago, and it seems uh, so immersive in comparison to any flight simulator that's, that's ever come before. In addition, of course, the TBM 930 is this fantastic, fast little turboprop. Uh, if, I, if I had four million dollars kicking around to spend on an aeroplane, it's exactly the kind of aeroplane that I would look to buy. Um, it's versatile, fun, and really, really nimble. You can just land it anywhere, you can take it off anywhere. It just feels like you could explore the whole world uh, using a plane like this. And that's exactly what we're, we're doing. I can't do it for real, but I can do it on my computer here at home. I can escape lockdown for a few hours and go and see the world, albeit on my computer screen. Uh, so if you've missed any of the previous episodes in the series, check out the playlist on this channel. The episodes are all there, and there'll be a lot more episodes, of course, to come. Uh, we started off in Cambridge in the UK. That's where I'm recording this from. I live just near Cambridge in the UK. It seems a long way away uh, now, though. Um, we went from Cambridge up to Scotland, up to Iceland, over to Greenland. Then we cut down through Canada, through Quebec City, Montreal, Ottawa, Toronto, then... We saw Niagara Falls, then we saw Chicago, then over to New York, down to Washington, down to Florida. We did the coastal tour of Florida, and now here we are. So there's been an awful lot to, to see and explore and enjoy. And today we have, uh, uh, we have a trio of flights, as I say, uh, going right across the Caribbean Sea, and we're going to be hitting South America. It seems amazing to think that we're only one uh, episode away now from crossing the equator and getting into the Southern Hemisphere. So here we are, runway 32 at Naples. Nothing else about at the moment, as I say, all very quiet on that sim. And I'm going to get the landing lights on. I'm going to get uh, the strobes on. Just double check that nothing's coming. And then we're going to line up and take off. Just give the inerts a quick blast. I am trying to improve my cornering with this aircraft, by the way. Uh, those of you who fly big airliners on Prepare3D and Microsoft Flight Sim will be familiar with the fact that when you turn corners in like a 777 or a 747, you, you have to kind of go over the line and then pull this huge hulking aircraft around. You don't have to do that on a TBM, but uh, old habits die hard, as they say. OK, let's go. Next stop is Havana. I'm going to time lapse the flight, so we'll be there in just a couple of minutes. Enjoy the ride.
Welcome to Havana. Uh, this is, of course, the capital city of Cuba, uh, with a population of 2.1 million people. It's also uh, Cuba's largest city. It's its commercial si uh, center. It's where Cuba's government sits. So to various ministries, diplomatic offices, and so on, as you'd expect in the capital. And we will be getting the drone out in a little while, once we've landed, and we're going to see if uh, if we can spot any of the, the major landmarks here. That being said, I am aware that there hasn't been a big Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 World update on Cuba and the Caribbean just yet. So it might be that uh, a lot of the key landmarks that might as regular property flats we will have to see. It's a big port as well. Um, I believe, in history, this port was actually used by the Spanish as a springboard uh, in their conquest of the Americas. So it's got a, a, an illustrious history as a port. This area over here I think is Old Havana and uh, then somewhere over here is a little airfield that we're planning on landing at. So I don't actually think the airfield we're landing in is still operational. It's quite hard to tell. It does still appear, thankfully, on Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, so we're going to be landing there. The major international airport, as you'd expect, sits just outside the city centre, and what we really want to do with Microsoft Flight Sim, oh, sorry, with the TBN 930 World Tour, is get right into the thick of these cities. If you can't land there with a 747, that's the airport that we want to go to uh, on this World Tour. Uh, so, yeah, there's an airport out here somewhere, whether it's still in use or not, uh, we will be using it today. This is a major cemetery just in front of us, right down here. Uh, it's quite a big plot. It takes up a big part of the downtown area in, in Havana. Some nice parks out this way. And oh yeah, I can see the I can see the airfield just over here. Here it is. Well the airport looks in reasonably good condition. I think we can certainly have a good shot at landing there. Okay, let's get back in the cockpit and start uh, start doing our approach. So I'm going to turn towards the airfield. I'm going to overfly the airfield just to the south and do a little uh, right-hand circuit and then back in. In more recent years, Havana has become a major, uh, a major tourist hub. It now attracts over a million tourists annually. Well, I say that, I guess it probably doesn't at the current time due to the pandemic. Uh, but it has had double digit increases year on year at certain times in, in recent history as people have flocked to explore this very historic city. It was first called Havana way back in 1592 uh, by Philip II of Spain. So it, it does have a long, long history. Longer, in fact, than the US, interestingly enough. Or well, certainly the US as we know it. So there is our airfield, right in the thick of Havana. You can't even see the International Airport. It's out on there on the horizon somewhere, I guess. So we're going to land on the runway we are seeing just down there. We're going to we're going to land in the direction heading towards the city. So off that way. What I'll do is a right-hand circuit. I don't think it needs to be particularly long. There's no air traffic in uh, operating the vicinity, so we can go straight in. It's also good on the way down, of course, we managed to uh, see Key West very briefly. I hadn't realised that my flight plan was going to go right over Key West. When I noticed uh, that we would be doing so, I quickly got out the drone and uh, went down to take a look at Key West, which is uh, quite a... I've never been there. I've been to Florida a few times, but I've not been down to Key West. I'd, quite, I'd be quite interested to see it. 
Uh, it's quite a unique little spot. Stuck right out at the bottom of Florida. Okay, so turning on to the downwind leg now. Just done a few checks as we uh, get into the latter stages of our approach. What we're going to do once we've landed, uh, we'll park the plane up, shut it down for a little bit and go and see some of the sites in Cuba in more detail. What I've done is I've carried out a little bit of research on what to see when you're in Havana and we can see what they look like in the Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 rendition of our world. Like I say, there's not been a world update for this region just yet. So, unfortunately, I don't think it's going to look as good as New York or Toronto or Chicago just yet. But hopefully there will be something soon uh, released by the Sobo Studios to make this whole area look a bit more authentic. But whatever the scenery looks like, the weather is spectacular. I'm up in Cambridge in the UK, as I say. It's February. And uh, this weather looks pretty amazing in comparison to what I can see outside my window right here in the real world. It's lovely and warm, hardly a cloud in the sky. It's clearer down here, actually, than it was in uh, up in Naples. Lovely day for a bit of VFR flying. So I'm just slowly but surely making my way onto final now. Just keeping the airport in sight just over there on my right hand side. You can see that white flashing light just to remind me where it is if I lose visual reference for a moment. One thing which really stands out about Havana straight from the off is it's obviously quite a low rise city in comparison to, well, I guess most recently we saw the high-rise buildings of Miami. Um, but before that, uh, we, we've seen the skyscrapers of New York and Chicago and Toronto and what have you. This seems pleasantly low-rise and quite colourful as well. Lots of kind of ceramic terracotta-type colours. Really attractive. OK, so here we are on final. Just concentrate on my landing a bit now. don't have any guidance systems at all here, not even Pappy lights at the side of the runway. For those of you not aware, Pappy lights are the red and white lights which sit next to a runway. So what you want when you're on approach is two reds and two whites, or an even number of red and white. If it's all red or mostly red, you're coming in too shallow. If it's all white or mostly white, then you're coming in a bit too steep. Now I don't have any of those guidance systems here, I'm just doing this by dead reckoning really, just by sight. But again, TBM 930, very forgiving plane. A lot of fun to fly, but also really quite straightforward to master. This looks nice. I'm happy with this. on, slow up a bit and we'll do a U-turn on the runway and go and park up. We'll just have a minute or so looking at the scenery in Havana and then we'll be taking off to Jamaica, our route to Kingston. Uh, as the crow flies we go straight across another section of the Caribbean Sea but instead because we are doing this world tour precisely to enjoy the scenery and to see the world, uh, I'm actually going to fly kind of south east through Cuba and uh, once we're further further southeast from here we'll then cut across a short bit of the Caribbean Sea over to Kingston. On the way into Kingston I'm approaching the city from the north so I'm hoping to see 
uh, some sights of uh, Jamaica's Blue Mountains, which are just to the north of Kingston. Depends on what the weather's like. It's it's looking pretty clear, and obviously it's hit, it's fine here in Havana, but uh, there's always the potential for storms. Um, but I'm hoping to get some good uh, good sights coming into Kingston as well. So we'll be setting off on that next leg in just a few moments time no other aircraft oh hang on actually there might be another aircraft just over there saying that I don't know if MSFS 2020 recognises this at all as being an operational airport or not like I say on Google Earth it looks like this is this has been taken out of service but it's a strip of concrete we can land on it that's fine Certainly when I did my flight plan and uh, I tapped it into uh, a sim brief and had a look on Sky Vector, it, it wasn't recognised in sim brief, that's for sure. In the end I just used the flight sim flight planning, flight, flight planning tool which did the job just as well. I think I'll just park up over here, doesn't seem to matter I think. This will do. Right, lights off. I'll turn off the bleed. Turn off the warnings. Turn off the uh, piezo heats. Switch off the automatic fuel and auxiliary boost pumps. And uh, turn off the flight rotor. And let's shut down. Okay, let's go sightseeing. So, as I say, I've done a little bit of research on top things to see in Havana. I can't promise that they're all going to be as authentic and attractive on most of the flights as they might be in real life. Our first stop is over at the entrance to the Canal de Entrada, the entrance to Havana port, where there is a restored 16th century harbour fortress, which is here, called the Castillo de San Salvador de la Punta. And forgive me for my appalling Spanish. There is the Canal to Entrada, I assume the entrance canal into the port. And just over the way there is the Faro del Castillo del Moro, another sight to see if you're ever in Havana. Um, obviously fortresses guarding the port. Just in the centre of the picture there, a large building with sort of circular ends to it. That's modelled on the US Capitol building, it's called El Capitolio. And here is Old Square or Plaza Vieja in Old Cuba. And then we're going to go to, well, this, this here is the Plaza de la Revolución. And the block of flats in the middle of the picture there is meant to be a monument. It's called Monumento a Jose Marti, uh, one of the Cuban revolution heroes. So it's a little bit basic. It's a bit like Washington, D.C. was. For anyone who went to Washington, D.C. before the world update on Flight Sim 2020, in that, you know, the White House at that point was a block of flats and the Washington Monument was a massive, thin building. Uh, so it's a little bit like that, but still, well worth seeing. Nice and colourful, and we've seen it in great weather. So let's get the plane started up again, and uh, we'll head off now to Kingston and see what that looks like. Uh, a, it's going to be a couple of hours flying time. Obviously, I will speed it up, as always. Uh, so you don't have to sit through hours and hours of cruising. Uh, you'll get to see all the sights, uh, but you won't have to expend huge amounts of time uh, in the, the cruise period. Uh, we're going to, as I say, be flying sort of southeast from Havana. We're going to be you know, covering most of the island, actually. And uh, you should see en route. I'm looking forward to seeing what we might see of the Grand Parque Natural Topes de Calantes. Again, apologies for my terrible Spanish, but that's uh, a slightly mountainous, also very undulating national park on, on the south coast of Cuba, which I think should be quite attractive. And we will then be crossing over the Caribbean Sea to Jamaica at the narrowest point between the island of Cuba 
and Jamaica. And we will be uh, approaching Kingston from the north, coming right alongside the Blue Mountains National Park. And uh, we will be landing in a tiny little airport, again, near the downtown area of Kingston, which is called Chinson Penn Aerodrome. Uh, in my VATS in flying, when I've been flying airliners, I've flown Gatwick to Norman Manley International Airport in Kingston before. Uh, but I have not flown to Tins and Penn. It's a tiny little aerodrome, thin runway, certainly big enough to take the TBM, uh, but you wouldn't want to get a big airliner in there. And we shall then see what the sights of Kingston look like. In particular, we're going to be seeing, uh, hopefully, the house where Bob Marley grew up, um, or certainly one of his former homes. I haven't been there in real life. I've never been to Jamaica, unfortunately. I'd love to go. Uh, but uh, we're going to see if we can find those sites when we get over to Kingston. And after that, we're on to Caracas. So if you follow my Instagram, and I'm at airborne underscore lawyer, so add me on your Instagram if you uh, want to see uh, some pictures of my flights as I tour the world, both on the TBM, world, uh, TBM 930 World Tour, but also uh, my airliner flying. Uh, I did a quick straw poll on whether to go from Havana and Kingston on a Caribbean island tour or whether to cross over the Caribbean Sea to Caracas and down into the Amazon. So by a majority of uh, two-thirds the answer was that we should go on to Caracas and into the Amazon so that's exactly what we're going to be doing after Kingston. Right, so just turning around here on the runway, I think I might just about make it without going onto the grass. Yeah. And once we've straightened up a bit and got on the centre line, we'll throttle up and take off for Kingston. Again, just a, a few minutes away as I'll be time lapsing the flight. Enjoy the ride, and we'll speak to you from the Blue Mountains just north of Jamaica's capital.
So welcome to the beautiful sunny island of Jamaica, the second of our three flights today, almost now complete. The city is just ahead of us there and over to the left hand side are the uh, Jamaican Blue Mountains, which look very beautiful, bathed in sunlight and lush and green. Here in Cambridge we've got a cafe called the Jamaica Blue Cafe and until I started doing a bit of research ahead of making this flight it hadn't occurred to me that the Jamaican Blue Mountains is the area of Jamaica in which that coffee is grown. Uh, so you learn a lot through preparing for these sorts of YouTube videos and hopefully there are some interesting anecdotes for you along the way as well. So we're just going to turn in towards Kingston here. Something else which really struck me in researching in making these videos is just how old some of these parts of the world are. We've obviously travelled through Canada and the US but modern day US, you know, post-independence US is pretty new in comparison to a number of these kind of cities. Kingston itself, which is just coming below us now, was founded in July 1693 uh, after the earthquake that hit Port Royal in 1692. Port Royal we're going to be visiting in a little while. Uh, and yes, yeah, so Port Royal was devastated by an earthquake and as a result the first section of Jamaica was founded uh, at the bottom of the Liguania Plains to house survivors of the Port Royal earthquake. And from that grew this, uh, this sizable city. It's a large city by Jamaican standards. Uh, but it's, it's not a huge metropolis you know, by the standards of New York and uh, London and other uh, larger, larger urban centres. It has a population of about 1.2 million people. And once again, very much like Havana, it's pretty low rise. There are no skyscrapers here. Now just down here at the waterfront uh, is the harbour and port. And there's a really small airport there called Tinson Pen. Now that's where we're going to be landing today. And Tinson Pen I think might be one of the smallest airports that we've yet visited on the TBM 930 World Tour. We've certainly visited some remote airports, Goose Bay and Nuke were very very remote, but this one, it's just down there, is really small. It's got a tiny narrow runway, so it's going to be really interesting. What I'm going to do here is just overfly the airport before making my approach in, just to get a feel for it, just so I can, I can see it. I can see down here this green area, there's a lot of trees there. This is the way I'm going to be landing, so I'm going to have to make an approach and come in low over those trees. And that is a tiny, narrow runway. We will be able to get in there. It will be okay to take a TVM 930, but it's, uh, it's going to feel pretty small, I think. And again, no guidance systems, no instrument landing system, no PAPI lights to guide me, and I'll just have to do it by sight and sight alone. The main international airport is right in front of us. That little island out there is the Norman Manley International Airport. I've flown there in the virtual sense. I haven't been there in real life, but I've flown there in a 777-200 out of Gatwick. And uh, that's, that's pretty straightforward, but I think Tinson Pen might be a whole different experience. So I'm going to do a left-hand circuit here. I'm about to turn left onto my crosswind leg. Just give myself a bit of space and I'm going to slowly descend over the city as I go and just get a feel for it. So we're turning to the left now and we'll be facing the Blue Mountains again very shortly. I'd heard of the Blue Mountains in Australia before today's flight. I hadn't heard of the Blue Mountains in Jamaica but again now hearing about the uh, the coffee growing which goes on in the Blue Mountains all makes sense. So sport is a big part of Jamaica, music is a big 
part of Jamaica and just coming up, it's just coming up under the nose here, we'll see it shortly when we turn onto our downwind leg, uh, is Independence Park, the National Stadium of Jamaica. Independence Park is the one with the blue track and then right next to it you've got Stadium East with the red track. In front of Independence Park is the National Aquatic Centre and you just got a glimpse of the swimming pool down there a moment ago. And also in front of Independence Park is a statue of Usain Bolt, obviously a great Jamaican hero and an incredible athlete. We're now heading on down onto our downwind leg, so the airport is off to our left hand side. We're going to turn left again and then left again before landing. Now this is getting quite interesting because clearly the elevation of the uh, land here is a bit higher than it is down at the waterfront. Feels like we're coming in quite low. And we've got this massive hill in front of us, so I better get this right. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. I haven't come in this low over the houses, I think, since I landed as Chicago executive back in episode 5 of the World Tour, where I slightly misjudged my approach and skimmed a few rooftops and I suspect struck a few satellite dishes and chimneys on the way in as well. Do have a look at episode 5, Toronto, Niagara and Chicago of the uh, TBM 930 playlist to check that approach out. That was a classic, I tell you. So, turning on to our base leg now. And we will then be making our final approach into Tinson Pen Aerodrome. Tinson Pen is down by Kingston Freeport. It's uh, it's certainly an active port and it has been for a long time. Uh, very shortly we're going to get the drone out and go and explore Port Royal. I'll tell you a bit more about Port Royal when we see it. Uh, but Port Royal was um, at one stage the centre of shipping and commerce in the whole of the Caribbean Sea. So again these, these cities uh, have, have a great history and go back a very long way. Uh, oh, whoops, just hit pause. Okay, let's carry on. Uh, they go back a long way and they have a great history and have played an important part in the development of the entire region. Okay, so I'm coming on to my final approach now and now I suddenly feel quite high up. So I'm going to have to uh, make a pretty swift descent. But as we spotted when we came over and did our reconnaissance a few moments ago, just got to be careful of these trees right in front of the runway. Yeah, those trees are now feeling pretty close, to be honest. I'll have to be careful not to puncture any tyres of the landing gear on any stray branches as I come over. Coming in a little bit fast, and we've still got to drop the nose down a bit, but uh, should be fine now, I think. It's looking good. But boy, this is narrow. Still a little bit fast. Let's just try and get it down. And there we are. Okay, slam on the brakes and oh, hit the reverse thrust. One thing I would say about the TBM, I do find it very sensitive on the rudder when you touch down on landing. It does like to uh, turn towards the wind if it can. So I'll just do a U-turn here on the runway, we'll park up and then we'll get the drone out and go and explore Kingston.
So I say I'll uh, do a U-turn here on the wrong way, expecting it to be the easiest thing in the world, and I end up on the grass. Oh well, these things happen. So we will uh, park up the plane and shut it down, let it cool off a bit. We uh, need to top up on fuel before the two hour or so flight down to Caracas. The flight to Caracas is going to be the more functional one of the day. It's going to take us straight across the Caribbean Sea. And it's a fair distance because it's pretty much directly southeast from here. We might see something of Aruba and the various islands just to the north of Venezuela on our way. But at the moment the weather is showing a fair bit of cloud just north of Caracas. If uh, something goes wrong, uh, or, or I, I need to divert, I'll probably go to Barranquilla in Colombo, uh, Colombia, Sorry, but uh, not expecting any particular issues. So the flight down to Caracas will be much more like a jet flight and it's going to take about two hours to get down there. Again, I'll, I'll time lapse it. The approach into, into Caracas will be interesting uh, because it's going to be quite mountainous. We'll talk about that more when we get there. But uh, again, we're, we're not landing at the main international airport, which is just on the coast, just at the north of Caracas. We're going to be landing in the uh, middle of Caracas itself, within the mountains, at an airbase, the Base Area Generalissimo Francisco de Miranda. Uh, so we will have to navigate our way through some interesting terrain. I've had a look at a few charts, and it's going to be pretty challenging but that's exactly what we enjoy doing on the TBM 930 World Tour. So this will do as a parking location. Don't need to be too picky. We don't need jetways. We don't need service vehicles on GSX. It's all very very simple with the TBM 930. We'll just turn it off for a few minutes and let it cool down for a while. Power down the engine and we can go and do some sightseeing. So again, I've done a little bit of research on top places to see in and around Kingston and our first, first stop is going to be Port Royal. We talked about Port Royal uh, a little bit earlier when we were just on our approach into Kingston. It's a village uh, just to the south of the city. Uh, it's located at the end of the palace, uh, Palisados at the mouth of Kingston Harbour. And it was founded in 1494. This was once the largest city in the Caribbean. And as I said a, a few moments ago, it was the centre of shipping and commerce in this area uh, by the latter half of the 17th century. But when an earthquake, earthquake devastated it, uh, the survivors of the earthquake set up camp a little bit to the north here in Kingston itself, which has now obviously grown to be the largest city in Jamaica. It's capital city, it's centre of government, centre of commerce, centre of pretty much everything, and centre of culture too. And that little house just down there was once home to the legend Bob Marley. Now, as I say, we haven't had an Asobo Studios uh, world update on this part of the world just yet but that's actually a pretty accurate rendition of Bob Marley's house from the Google image search I just did so uh, it's not not at all bad the scenery around here so just a very quick stop in Jamaica before we're going to be uh, taking off again and we just get the plane all set up we will uh, take off from the same runway we landed at runway 14 we're going to climb out and over the top of Norman Manley International Airport, which is, uh, as I say, located on uh, one of the Palisados. Pa pa Palisados. I'm not sure how you pronounce that word. Interesting one. Uh, these sort of natural sea walls, almost that, that uh, sit just outside of Kingston Harbour. So we'll climb up and out and then straight out over the Caribbean Sea. The next stop 
the next time we uh, hit land will be South America. And that in itself seems pretty remarkable. We started this journey in this turboprop, this single engine turboprop, all the way back in Cambridge in the UK. And now we're hitting South America. So just doing all the usual startup procedures on the TBM 930 as we've done now many, many times before. And now let's get the pushback trolley over to uh, get ready to taxi out. We're carrying a fairly decent fuel load here. We've got a fairly chunky flight ahead. So uh, I want to make sure we've got plenty of space to reach our rotation speed of 90 knots here at Tinson Pen. I think we will do it. It's long, it's just really narrow. Aural warning, OK. Give the inerts of a blast, switch on the taxi lights. Let the pushback trolley get out of our way and then we will head off. Okay, let's go. Farewell to Kingston. I've really enjoyed this actually, it's been a nice place to stop. It's got a bit cloudier as our uh, time here has gone on. As you can probably guess obviously when I edit the footage that I take of flying, you know, I do jump around a bit in time and uh, there's a, this is a full day of flying here so I've taken quite a break and the weather has closed in a bit. I'm really glad that we we got in to see the beautiful Blue Mountains just the north of Jamaica before the clouds we can see up here came in. Of course the beauty of flight simulation is I could just turn off the weather but somehow that seems to spoil the realism. I, I quite like the sense of chance and luck when you get the right weather to see things in and, and also I like having to respond in real time to the challenges that weather can present when you're flying. You, know, you, you might not expect to fly into strong winds or an electric storm or have very low visibility or any of that stuff and it, it just makes it more exciting to, uh, to respond to it in that way and uh, still try and take off and land safely despite whatever the meteorological conditions might be. But yeah I don't think we've got such a clear view of those mountains on our way into Kingston, Kingston have we been approaching now. Maybe it's the cloud we saw up in Naples finally making its way down this way. So we'll line up here on runway 14. We'll bid farewell to lovely Kingston. And we're going to turn to the southeast. And the next time we speak, we will be in South America in Venezuela. Enjoy the ride.
so we have made it now to South America, Caracas, Venezuela. And that's the airport we're going to be landing at very, very shortly. Again, I'm just doing a quick recce over this airport to uh, check it out and uh, figure out how I'm going to approach it. This is really challenging terrain. Obviously, I just time-lapsed the approach in there, but Caracas is located along the Guayare River in the northern part of Venezuela in the Caracas Valley, uh, Valley uh, of the uh, Venezuelan coastal mountain range known as the Cordillera de la Costa. And this valley is uh, clearly very close to the Caribbean Sea. It's only just a few miles to the north of us. But the Caribbean Sea is separated from us here by a steep 2,200 meter high mountain range, the Caro El Avila. And uh, that has presented a few challenges just in terms of getting in here, because obviously it's attracted in some of the clouds and some of the precipitation and so on, which is effective visibility. And I've needed to kind of cut through that, navigate around that in order to see where I'm going, whilst also being very, very cautious of the challenging terrain, challenging and extremely varied terrain. It's kind of up and down dale everywhere here. So I've just got us to a point where we're visual with the runway and I'm going to do a quick left-hand circuit and then touch down. But you can see the challenging terrain here right, right throughout the city. We're facing, I think, the main downtown area of Caracas here. I've never been to Caracas, so this is my first visit, both on flight sim and, you know, in real life. Clearly this isn't real life. I know it's a simulator. My, my, my experiences of COVID-19 lockdown have not distorted my perceptions of reality to such an extent that I actually think this is real life. Uh, but this is, in any sense, my first visit to Caracas. You can just see the Caribbean glimpsing in the middle of the valley, just straight in front of us there. But, as I say, getting into Caracas has been an interesting one, just to, to stay visual with the landscape. This has been a, a full day of flying. There's been a lot to see. I'm exhausted. And if you've made it this far through the video, well, frankly, well done. Give yourself a pat on the back and definitely treat yourself to a subscribe so you get a notification when I next put up a video. But we will take a look at Caracas properly with the drone ahead of my next flight. And before we land here in Caracas, let me say a few things about what we're doing next. So, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, we uh, did a quick poll on Instagram. Do we go from Kingston, Jamaica, around the Caribbean islands, or do we go Caracas and down into the Amazon? And the, uh, the majority of people said, let's go Caracas and down into the Amazon. So from Caracas, we're going to head southeast again, down to Canaima, which is the closest airport, the closest settlement, really. It's, it's absolutely tiny, to Angel Falls. And what we're going to try and do is get uh, a, good, uh, a, a good shot at seeing Angel Falls. Now, it's in the Amazon. It's right near the equator. So the weather might be interesting, uh, but we will take that as it comes and hopefully get to see Angel Falls on our next flight. And after that, we're going to be flying on through the equator and into Brazil to Manaus, the capital of the Amazonian region. So lots to look forward to on the next episode. Once I get the chance to fly it and once I get the chance to edit all the footage into something which uh, it's hopefully enjoyable, relaxing, entertaining, and who knows, maybe even vaguely informative to watch. I know this is kind of like a budget version of a Michael Palin travel series, but it's lockdown. What else is there to do, really? So we're now on our final approach. As I say, this is not a civilian airfield. I don't know if we'd be able to land here in real life because this is the uh, Generalissimo Francesco de Miranda Air Base. But we may as well take our chances with Flight Sim, take, take the opportunities that it presents us with whilst we have them. And landing in a small inner city air base uh, seems like the right thing to do so that we get to see the downtown core. You can fly to international airports in real life. You can fly there any day on flight sim, let's do something a bit different for this tour. A lot of dense detail, a lot of buildings here. This is a bit more high rise. The population of Caracas, the kind of total metropolitan area of Caracas, 
has a population of about five million people. So this again is a is a serious city after travelling through uh, the smaller environments of Havana and Kingston today. And obviously Naples in Florida isn't big either. Uh, this is a much more substantial city. But of course Venezuela itself really is quite a sparsely populated uh, country overall. The one very sad fact that I read in researching for this uh, for this video is that Caracas is unfortunately the homicide capital of the world with a per capita murder rate of six, uh, 76 homicides per 100,000 inhabitants which uh, that's pretty sad but we don't need to worry about that on flight sim we can go and see the best bits of Caracas and we will be doing that in the next episode as I say look out also on Instagram as I said Take a look at the Instagram, follow it, follow it uh, if you want to keep up to date with what we're doing on the TBM 930 World Tour. I might be doing another poll on there to see where do we go after Manaus, because we could either head from Manaus out east along the Amazon River to the coast of uh, Brazil and then kind of cut down from there, gradually making our way down to Sao Paulo and Rio. Or maybe we carry on straight down south, maybe we go from Manaus and, and hit the road to Rio straight off and go and see uh, Rio de Janeiro sooner rather than later. I might I might that put that to a poll on Instagram so be sure to follow me on Instagram and look out for that in the next few uh, days or weeks. Quick reminder of all the places we've been to on the World Tour so far. If you missed any episodes they're all on the playlist so do go back to the TBM 930 World Tour playlist and check out some of the fantastic places that we've visited so far. It all started in my hometown of Cambridge and now here we are in the capital city of Venezuela. We have had thick snow, thick ice, blazing sunshine, electric storms, the lot. It's, it's been an extremely varied and interesting journey so far, and this epic journey will continue in the next episode. Look out for that. Please hit subscribe. Please click like if you've enjoyed watching this. I will see you very, very soon for the next episode when we head down to the Amazon. Thanks for watching.